And so in 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. And since when I got diagnosed, you know, of course I have to go through all the normal procedures and the next thing I know I'm supposed to get surgery. But then, very interestingly, three times of the scheduled surgery all got canceled for various reasons. And I think it was in 2019, uh, around September, October, uh, it, the situation was so bad. And I remember there was a doctor that came visit. He believed that Nicole only has six weeks left. And I remember that night before I went to bed, uh, my best friend Joy Lin, she just came to my bed and said, Nicole, I really need to prepare you. And when she started telling me that she needed to prepare my heart, I was really puzzled because I didn't feel like I was dying. But then that night, I went to bed really, really puzzled. And I was feeling very, very weak in my, in my body. And the Lord usually speaks to me upon waking up. So that morning before I woke up, uh, I just felt that the Lord spoke to me. And I felt the Lord said, there are only four potential options for you right now. I cannot think of any more than those four. The first option would be, I die. And when I think of that first option, I think death is something most people really, you know, fear about and because you know cancer is so related to not curable and so related to death that's why it's every time people got you know you hear a diagnosis of cancer there's tremendous fear but really interestingly when i thought of the first option that i would be dying there was an unspoken excitement that filled my heart and the reason being if i die I get to see the one that I preach about all the time. There was just an unspoken joy. So the second option that I felt the Lord revealed to me is that I still died. But as Papa Gideon was speaking to me earlier, you know, there, there were, he believed that this for the end time age, there would be a lot of resurrection and many people would not taste death. So I thought of this option as, wow, this is so cool. I get to die? and resurrect <laughs> it's an unbelievably fun you know thing to even think of wow i get to die and resurrect that's incredible to me that was exciting so the third option is i don't die but then if i don't die that means the third option possibly i would experience a miraculous healing i would get healed boom instantly and then the fourth option is i would not die and I would not, I don't experience instant healing right away. I just gradually, you know, being healed by God. The fourth option is probably the worst. And the three, the first three were all very exciting. But then I believe I was at the fourth option where I didn't really get an instant healing right away. So I just, you know, suffer through many more, you know, many more days to come. So that was in 2019. I felt that in my heart, it was really resolved. And I feel that death could not hold me. I've conquered that. And not because I'm strong in faith. It's only because I feel there is such a tremendous love from, from the Lord Jesus. And I'm really grateful that even before uh, my first book, actually, my first published book was about Son of Songs from Jewish betrothal, looking into the whole Son of Songs from the Jewish perspective and you know Hebrew word study. And I feel that that became a great foundation and you know prepare me for you know this love and intimate relationship with Jesus, prepare me for the days to come. So then after 2019, I didn't die of, of course, but then the disease wasn't gone. You know, I, I continued to suffer. I, my body was still very weak. And in 2020, I went to get a naturopath in uh, Texas so my situation started to improve uh, it, it was a great news we spent a lot of money on that and really grateful that my friend helped me to set up a GoFundMe and I you know raise some fun and start going to this treatment in Texas so very happy because you know I was improving but 2020 October 
I became the lucky one because I got COVID. <laughs> I got hit by COVID. As, and at the time, I was a stage four cancer patient. I would assume that, you know, it's probably, I'm probably done, you know, this is, this is it over. But that whole week, when I was affected by uh, COVID, it was actually just low fever. I was, you know, there were a lot of uh, discomfort, throwing up, diarrhea, horrible, whatever that's going on, lost my taste and everything that you experienced when you got COVID. But then I didn't die. I was like, wow, not bad. I probably still have pretty good immune system. I take a lot of vitamins. Little did I know that a month or two later, probably at the end of 2020, uh, something started to happen. Even though I didn't die, I started to notice that uh, it's hard for me to eat, it's hard for me to drink. And I was only 90 pounds and less than 90 pounds at the time. And But then I was wondering why I was so skinny, but all my pants doesn't fit. Meaning my tummy was so big. I was like, why? I don't know what's going on. And, and I think that time the liver number came out to be I don't even know how to report that. It was all red. It was, the number was, again, really, really, really extremely high. And basically it shows that my liver has failed. And my liver, my entire liver from the past scan shows that it's filled with cancer cells. And not only that, there were five different organs all filled with cancer cells. And so, so at the time, the doctor said, now I'm more worried about your liver than your cancer. So with the condition, I think I've, I, I think I was really ignorant at the time, but thankfully I'm very ignorant because anybody who have a little medical knowledge would know people with the condition of a blowing uh, Tommy was usually the end stage cancer, uh, liver cancer patient. And usually it's time to say goodbye at the point. It was at the point of no return. So uh, many people start to wonder, you know, we pray so hard, I, she's gonna make it. And my, they, the, the doctor has to draw, draw water out from my Tommy twice. The first time was 1200 CC, the second time was 2000 CC. And it didn't help. Right away, almost right away, the water built up, came back right away. I was like a three, four months old, you know, pre pregnant woman. Uh, so it was, the condition was really, really bad. I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I just, you know, I, I'm losing my function, losing my life. And it was during that time, uh, many intercessors started to gather to fight for my life. And including the IHOP family, my most immediate family, and also uh, some of the international families. And my friends start calling some Zoom calls, the, the Zoom meeting to start, you know, having people coming together to pray for me. And I remember uh, when they start praying for me, things started to happen. So I remember in the, in the call, in the Zoom call, one of the pastors from Japan said, Nicole, why don't you stand up and let the camera, you know, uh, be positioned at your Tommy area so we, we could all stretch out our hands and to pray for you. So yeah, of course, so I just obeyed that. I just stood up and let the camera zoom to my Tommy area. After they pray, it was already pretty late. I think it was like 10, 11 o'clock at nighttime. So I was tired. I went to bed. The next morning, I woke up. And I look into the mirror. My tummy was all flat. Like in one prayer meeting, I was like, what's going on? This is, is this a miracle? And since then, the water never came back. Because supposedly the water will continue to build up and the person just died. Okay, so the water never came back. And not only that, uh, my dear friend Amanda has been helping me to change dressing every day because uh, I had surgery in September. And I remember, I think it was maybe October, November, she, in my worst, worst time, and she mentioned to me, Nicole, I don't, I hate to tell you this, but I feel that you may need to go back to check with the surgeon because I noticed that there were three bumps, like, you know, like a fingertip. I noticed that there were three bumps coming out from your surgical area. 
And I was like, oh, okay. So I went back to the surgeon and the surgeon said, yeah, I believe it's the, you know, the cancer was still growing even though after the surgery. After I experienced that miracle, how the water was completely gone in one prayer meeting at one night. A few days later, I asked Amanda, so what happened to those three bombs? And Amanda just said, well, they, they're not there anymore. They disappear. I was like, what? They disappear? And I thought it was normal. But then I asked my friend, one of my co-workers, uh, Angel Williams, she used to be a surgeon in China. So I asked her, you know, what, what is it? Tell me, if, according to your knowledge, she said, Nicole, doesn't matter if those three bombs were cancerous or even benign. It's already a miracle because even if it is benign, it doesn't just go away like completely. So what, you, what had happened to you is another miracle. During the time, I didn't feel that there was electricity in my body or anything. I didn't feel anything. But the Lord started doing things little by little. And then, uh, so I'm very, very grateful. And I remember after the flu was gone, I went back to the doctor. The doctor just said, what did you do? What have you done? I said, my family prayed. Oh, you know, the doctor couldn't say anything because really he didn't give, he didn't give me any medicine to kill to help with the water situation. So the intercessors, <laughs> I love people that pray because they, and, and several people, several groups of people start telling me that they feel that March of this year, uh, the Lord is about to do a total reverse on my condition. And my own mother, who is not a prophet, <laughs> from last year when I was in my worst condition, meaning 2020, uh, at the end of the year that was in my worst condition almost dying but my mom just kept saying Nicole I'm telling you I believe you will be totally healed in March I'm like mommy you are interesting you know you, you have no idea what where I'm at right now but anyways um, so after the abdominal flu was gone after uh, the miracle of the three bombs was, was gone um, my cancer marker was it was at 5,000 close to 5,000 at the time which is really crazy and it was close to 5,000 at the time so every two weeks it dropped by thousands it wasn't dropping by hundreds it was dropping by thousands so by the time early March um, I think the cancer marker dropped to 400 so I think it's getting very close so I asked the doctor can I because I know that I needed real medical evidence to prove that the Lord has done something, you know, according to how people pray, how they receive in March. So I asked the doctor, can I do another PET scan, which is supposed to be the most accurate uh, report. So when I uh, requested, he said, okay, why, why don't we do that? So he gave me a prescription and he asked me to do, finally they arranged for me to do a PET scan um, April 7th, Wednesday morning, I still remember. So I went early in the morning, did the scan. They told me you're gonna get a result very soon. April 9th, I went back to the oncologist and then he just pulled out the paper and told me, Nicole, this is your medical evidence. From the scan, they find no cancer in your body. And you have to, re you have to know this. Two, three months ago, there were cancer feeling all over my body and I, it, it, I didn't do any, any special treatment, nothing. It was only because people pray. It was only because my family, people like you, people like you know, whoever that cared for me, dared to ask the Lord and say, Lord, heal her. So um, in March, so April 9th was the day that the doctor declared and it was funny, he didn't even know that I was looking for, you know, the whole reason I requested for this scan was I needed medical evidence. So, so, so on April 9th, he declared that we find no cancer in your body. All five, all five organs that previously have cancer were all clean now. So I really experienced um, a miracle and it didn't come right away as I expected, but then I, I'm really, really grateful and I, and looking back, I know that, and remember the, you know, on April 9th in the doctor's office, 
the doctor didn't know what to say. He he only said, and the, the nurse was standing right by him and said, Nicole, you are a true miracle. And I told them, no, it's not because of me, because my family prayed. And the whole process of my healing, I really want to testify this because it has nothing to do with my faith. I know a lot of faith healing was stressed. That okay, patients, you need to have faith. You need to have stronger faith. If you don't get healed, you need to have even stronger faith. But I, I want it's not that I don't have faith. I always believe in the Lord. But I feel that for me, it was so, so real to me that when people of God coming together, there's such a power in the corporate prayer. And I know I experienced it for the first hand. When people pray, my condition changed. When people pray, my condition changed. And I remember even when in 2019, when I was in my worst stage, Diane Bickle and also Daniel Lin both came to visit me, and they decided to call IHA for 21 prayer, 21 days prayer. So all these prayer meetings have really shifted the, the whatever that's happening in my body. And I could only testify to you. I'm not a woman of strong faith. I am only a very ordinary person. It's really because my family prayed.